This video is talking about the process to develop a business aligned systems. It covers more than a requirement capturing. Nowadays, the IT systems become a very critical component of a business, especially a efficient and successful business. It's not just an option, it's a kind of the critical factors to be success. And if you see the trend, most of the business operations to date are supported by a lot of IT systems. Something is directly supports like provide a web interface for the, for the users to use the systems. Or indirectly, for example, when you call to the call center, they can answer your call, get your information without delay through the information systems. So the information system aligned to the business can give a very big value to this business and make it success. I'm going to talk about to develop the business aligned systems. And it's not just about to capture the right requirements or to manage the right requirements. It's about to understand the business operations. And in this process, we need a business process modeling to understand the business operations in an effective manner and can document for communication purpose. Let's take a look about the traditional requirement capturing process and the business process modeling. What's the differences? First of all, if you're talking about requirement capturing, you ask the user what he or she want. But in business process modeling, the analyst role is used to understand what he or she is doing in the daily work. And in other point of view, in requirements capturing, it's talking about the functional point of view. For example, each requirement will sp fulfill specific functions like generate the invoice. It just generate the invoice but doesn't take care about what's next. But in business process modeling, we will do it in a process point of view. Like we don't say generate invoice. We're talking about the invoicing process. Maybe you can send the invoice directly to the customers through emails in this invoicing process. But in requirements, it's just a standalone requirements. And in requirements capturing, it's limited to what the system provides. The analyst will focus on what the system can provide for the user. It's a kind of features, kind of functions, or a kind of <coughs> uh, user goal he fulfilled. But in business process modeling, it's um, have a big picture of, of the user's value. You're not just focusing what the system wants to provide, but have a step back view to know what the user really want to do. Then you may find a lot of creative ideas instead of just providing the systems. For example, you can restructure the process a little bit to make it even more efficient than before. So that means we don't need a requirements capturing. Definitely not. And the process is we do the business process modeling at the beginning to understand what the users really need. Um, be careful. User not really know what he need un unless you really capture the business process. Sometimes they will even don't understand what he really want to do or uh, what he need. Then, based on what you understand, you capture the requirement based on the business process diagrams. In the rest of these demonstrations, I will show you how it works. Let's start by see the business process modeling. And in this video, I don't, I will not drill down into details about the business process modeling. You can find out more materials on our YouTube channel. And the business process modeling is in first step is to identify the stakeholders. The stakeholder will become the pool or length in the business process. Stakeholders here means who involved in the process. And then you find the kickoff point. Why, where is the process start? This has become the start event of the business process. And then you ha ask who will do the work. And then this will become the task. And then ask what to do next. Then this will become the sequence fold. Okay, let me just show you a quick demonstration about drawing the business process diagrams. 
I just fired up the Visual Program for UML Enterprise Editions and I do just basic introductions. Here's the toolbar for you to create the diagrams and other features. And on the left hand side you can see the tree and the property panes and the diagram areas. On the bottom is a message plane. I can close it to get more rooms to diagrams. I can create a business process by go to business process diagrams. And then I can give it the name. It says fire safety department process. Something like that. And I can close the plane. Then I can start drawing the business process. I can put the pool, the stakeholder, as I said, is in the fire safety department. Fire safety department. And then under the fire safety department, I can have some length that is in supervisor. And maybe I add one more. I can right click the pool to add the link. This is an office assistance and then the start event to kick off is the from the supervisors and he will start the event start the process and instead of going back and forth to the toolbars and the diagram you see there is a lot of resources icons surrounded you just need to drag and drop to do the diagram select inspections case for next week something like that I can this is smaller then you can create the other tasks etc We just finished the business process diagram. Let's take a look. We have the schedule inspections and then we'll go through a step of process and finally we'll submit the report to the supervisors to approve is yes, go to close the case. If no, we will continue to rescheduling, some reschedule the inspections. This is the basic business process. Okay, now we got the business process diagram. We finished the business process modeling uh, phrase. Let's move on to capture the requirements. I will show you the ideas of how to get the requirements from the business process. And we got the business process diagrams. And the business process diagram is focused on business operations. It's a flow base. It's complete the task and flow to the others to do the task, etc., etc and for the requirements we can use the use case diagrams the use case diagrams is a focus on the systems the center part the big box is around is about the systems and there's a different actors around the system who will use the systems and there's a lot of uh, use case inside the systems we call a goal the user goal what user want to do you can see this very different diagram. Left hand side we focus on the flow. On right hand side we focus on who will want to use the systems for specific purpose. Let's zoom into the business process diagrams. Here is a portion of the business process diagram. We have the supervisors to do the work is a select inspection case for next week. This is the task performed by the supervisors. So if we develop a features that is for the supervisor to select inspection case, we can identify this is a kind of functions he need. So we can transform the select inspection case for next week as a use case. You can imagine it is a kind of features provided by your systems. And at the same time, the supervisor will be the actor to use the functions you provide. So you can see you got a very good uh, hint. I can't say it's a direct one-to-one -one mapping, but you will get a hint to know 
what features the user want and very importantly it is about aligning to the business this is focused on the operations you can mine the operations to get the user's goal to get the right requirements this is the ideas of capture the requirement based on the BPM I will show you how it works let's go back to the visual paradigm for UML and use the same idea select inspection case for next week you can create the use case from this task instead of drawing a new diagrams and then follow the diagram visual paradigm for UML provides a very easy to use ut utilities you can right click on the task and go to the related elements then you can go to create use case then you just create a use case and it will automatically fill in the name select inspection case for next week if you like you can change for example in more general I just support select inspection cases and you can also it also help you to find the actors at the same time then I just click OK and then I just visualize in the fire safety systems use case diagrams show it then you can see I have the supervisors to do the select inspection case you can repeat this process one by one to find out which task for example confirm inspections is kind of the features we want then you can right click go through the same procedures to create a use case and OK just so you see the assistance is showing here and I can create a systems to contains and this is a fire safety system something like that then you see I created the find the use case based on the business process diagrams let's move on to a more advanced topics about the traceabilities and in use case and requirements capturing we show you the business process to the use case but if you want to know what features will support specific tasks in the business process diagram this is very commonly asked by the management I have this task I want to know the progress or is this features is ready in our systems then in this case you can from the task go to the use case to see which use case supporting this task or in other way wrong you may want to know if I have the use case what operations is this use case supporting for in this case you can go back from the use case go back to the task let's see how it works okay we just come back from the visual paradigm for UML enterprise editions you can go to the business process diagram here and if you want to know which use case is this task supporting you can just select the task and on the right bottom corner you see there is a model transitor you can click on the model transitor and select the transit tool and go to the fire safety systems the select inspection case use case you just click it it will send you to the use case diagrams then select the select use case case and you can also do the same things to go back like the confirm inspections the same icon but this time it is coming from not to you see the tool is nothing you just coming from the task you just go back you see it select as confirm inspections so in this case even you have a thousands of the tasks and use case you can easily to trace back and forth between them without losing the connections and in some case for example in the business process you have a lot of tasks but you don't know which task has the use case supporting then you can right click on the empty area of the diagrams and go to the presentations options you can turn on the always show model elements indicators you just click this one then you will see this use case have the transit icon and others we don't have and this one have the transit icon you just click it and go to the use case something like that so you can use these features to keep the traceabilities of the systems thank you very much for watching this video and have a good day